we're gonna go over the best supplements that natties can take, and we're gonna start right now. When we're trying to get swole, when we're trying to get beefy, nice and big, we have to look at what's happening when we're consuming protein, when we're recovering from resistance-based training, and ideally that's what we're trying to do. If we wanna get bigger, we wanna get into you know, physique stuff, or just gaining mass so that we look bigger, we have better confidence, whatever it is, whatever motivates us, right? We have to understand if we wanna stay natty, what can contribute to our adaptation so that we can actually enhance our muscle mass. So if you look at muscle protein synthesis, there's a constant seesaw between muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein degradation. So throughout the day, you're either gaining or you're losing, and it's this constant balance, back and forth, back and forth. It's not this like, right now I'm gonna be in the anabolic window, so I'm getting bigger, and in two hours I'm catabolic, and then three hours after that, I'm just gonna be neutral. It's always going back and forth, depending upon what's happening throughout your day. And so natties don't have the advantage that drug users have. So if you use steroids or anabolic agents, performance enhancing drugs, if you're using testosterone injections or testosterone cream, which is extremely effective, if you're using something like oxandrolone, so Anavar or stenozolol, Winstrol, these are all very potent anabolic drugs that lead to making that muscle protein synthesis window bigger and more powerful. There's a greater chance, there's a greater opportunity to add massive amounts of muscular mass, okay? And so some of these drugs, even something like Masteron or Oxandrolone, Anivar, these are drugs that are so potent, they're so good at what they're designed to do that when steroid users might go into a caloric deficit, they can still add or maintain muscular mass, whereas natties are gonna struggle quite a bit more because they don't have that anabolic advantage. So looking at that muscle protein synthesis versus muscle protein degradation, seesaw back and forth, what can natties do if they're not gonna take Ganivar, if they're not gonna take stenozolol, if they're not gonna take test cream? What can they do with nutrition and what can they do with supplements to help them get more swole? Okay, so the big thing is natties don't want to use gear, right? They don't want to use steroids. They want to do it with food. They want to do it with fitness-based training, so resistance training, sprints, whatever that it might be, anything that's going to force some type of physical adaptation, and then they wanna do that with supplements. So what can we do? Where can we start? Where can natties definitely start? Okay, this is the first thing that I need to do to make that step towards getting more yield. And my first recommendation is going to be take creatine, take creatine monohydrate. Use the formula of taking 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if I weigh 100 kilos, I'm gonna take 10 grams. Most supplement companies will dish out their creatine with five gram scoop. So if you weigh over 200 pounds, just take two scoops of creatine monohydrate. It's gonna improve your focus. It's going to improve your recovery. It's gonna make you more powerful. You're gonna be able to put out more power in the gym. It's gonna enhance your endurance even so you can do more reps at a higher weight, which will lead to greater adaptation. When we're taking creatine, we will see that adaptation through myofibrillar hypertrophy, which will lead to strength gains and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Okay, so I recommend taking 0.1 grams per kilogram of body weight every day post-workout. Okay, so do this post-workout. We've seen through some different studies, and this is mainly from Scott Forbes. He's done a whole bunch of studies and seen that there's a little bit better absorption when creatine is taken with protein. It's not necessary, but it can enhance your creatine absorption, which will lead to better performance. That second key tip is make sure you're getting enough protein. This is something that I typically will just gloss over because I think everybody's doing this. And then I have some world-class athletes that are struggling to recover from their training and they're claiming that they're getting bigger, they're gaining this weight, and then they weigh in and they haven't gained any weight. And you look at what they're doing in MyFitnessPal and they're eating you know, 100 grams, 150 grams of protein. Their protein intake has plummeted. And so I recommend using whey protein, use casein protein, or if you have dairy allergens, then use plant protein. Plant protein is effective, it does work. You have to take more of it, but it is still very, very effective. I recommend one gram per pound 
okay, per pound of body weight. So using my example of weighing 100 kilos, that's 220 pounds. I don't weigh that right now, but for simple math purposes, I should be consuming 220 grams of protein daily. If I'm training for an hour to an hour and a half every single day, or at least five or six days a week, I wanna make sure I'm getting that 220 grams of protein to enhance my overall recovery. And I wanna space that throughout the day. Typically, I would go at least three different boluses of when you would be taking that protein to make sure that you're feeling good, you're feeling satiated, you're staying lean, and you're increasing your muscle mass. That third key supplement that natties could take to increase their lean muscle mass is going to be vitamin D3. Okay, there is so much research around vitamin D3 improving coordination and improving skeletal muscle mass. There's even been research that has shown that athletes that have lower levels of vitamin D actually have a higher rate of being injured. So if we have a substantial increase in our vitamin D, that will decrease our rate of injury, which will help us have a prolonged exposure to gaining lean muscle mass. I recommend taking a good multivitamin or take vitamin D3 directly and get 5,000 IUs daily. I think that's a really good place to start, but you have to be monitoring this through blood work. I recommend quarterly to every six months you get blood work done so that you know where those levels are. You have a good baseline for your overall health and that if you're younger, 25 to 30 years old, you can look back when you're 40 and see, okay, where was my baseline when I was 25 to 30? How am I comparing with my overall health and longevity and how can I improve that? And typically it's gonna be through taking vitamin D3, especially throughout the winter time. This fourth key supplement is gonna go along with a little bit of a ritual, okay? I recommend taking ZMA, okay? We recommend Earth Fed Muscles 40 Winks. It's got zinc, it's got magnesium, panathene, choline, vitamin B6, all of these different things that can help improve your sleep. Sleep, to me, is this secret anabolic agent, right? If we can get eight to 10 hours of sleep daily, and then even a 30 to 60 minute nap throughout the day, as long as we're going outside and we're seeing sun in the morning, we're seeing sun at midday, we're seeing sun in the afternoon, that's gonna help establish that circadian rhythm. And then we're taking our 40 winks or our ZMA and we're winding down properly. When we take our ZMA, I like that to be the trigger that I turn off all of my electronics. So we ideally should be getting anywhere from 40 to 90 milligrams of zinc throughout our day. We should be getting anywhere from 200 to 800 milligrams of magnesium, typically glycinate or three and eight for some different people. It depends on how they handle that. And if we're getting 200 to 800 milligrams of those different types of magnesium throughout the day, that will help us sleep a little bit better. It's gonna improve our recovery. And when we use that as a trigger point, okay, 60 minutes before bed, I'm gonna take my 40 winks, I'm gonna take my ZMA. Now I wanna turn off all of my lights that are gonna affect my sleep pattern, that could affect my circadian rhythm. I'm gonna get better sleep and I'm gonna recover better and that's gonna to lead to an increase in lean muscle mass. Remember, that's gonna tip that seesaw a little bit higher on muscle protein synthesis. Okay, now I'm gonna give you two bonus tips, all right? So I also like to use caffeine and I also like to use NO, okay, so nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, I am typically gonna get from beetroot juice, okay? We are fortunate enough in this area where I live that we have people that make fermented beetroot juice. Now, there's a couple other ways that you can get this. If you know a high quality beetroot powder that has been studied and researched to actually have the amount of nitric oxide that is necessary to stimulate that muscular growth, then by all means use that supplement. Nitric oxide from research from Judy Anderson. So Judy Anderson is someone that I had on a podcast about two years ago, and she's done a ton of research on satellite cells. She has seen in her research that nitric oxide can stimulate satellite cell proliferation and mobilization, okay? So if we can mobilize those satellite cells and then proliferate them, they can go to the construction site, essentially, of where there's some type of muscular degradation and they can improve through myofibrillar hypertrophy the health of that specific muscular area. Okay, so nitric oxide can do wonders with stimulating muscular size, muscular mass, and caffeine can also play a huge role. Caffeine can help us with being more focused. Caffeine can help us with endurance. Caffeine can also help us by decreasing our pain tolerance. So again, I recommend using this stuff daily. Caffeine, I would say you could go five days a week, 
cycle on and off. I would recommend using three milligrams per kilo of body weight to start with caffeine. So if I weigh, you know, again, 100 kilos and I multiply that by three, I'm gonna have about 300 milligrams pre-workout, 30 to 60 minutes before I'm gonna start training and see how that feels. You could have that 30 to 60 minutes before you're about to train, 15 to 20 minutes prior to training, you have that nitric oxide. So use caffeine and nitrogen almost daily, see what you feel, see how your effects are. And some people will feel even with nitric oxide that they get a really big time pump. They feel really good. They have better mind muscle connection. Some bodybuilders have even been using Cialis to get that nitric oxide so that they can have an increased and prolonged pump during their workout. Okay, so we learned that natties don't have this larger muscle protein synthesis window that anabolic users have. It's a little bit more challenging. We need to get at least five to six days of training in each week if we're gonna be natty. We need to make sure that we're supplementing that creatine, vitamin D3, we're getting caffeine, nitric oxide, ZMA, we're sleeping as well as we possibly can, and we're getting as much protein as we possibly can to enhance our overall recovery. Now, this list is not exhaustive, but it's a really good place for natties to start if they wanna see the lean muscle mass start to increase. If you need help with your nutrition, you can click on the link down below in our description. We have a free nutrition program that we designed specifically for one of our on-site NFL linebackers. You can get a peek into his nutrition, where he's natty, and you can see how he would eat throughout the day and apply that directly to your nutrition. If you don't want that, you can also click on the link that will take you to garagestrength.com where you can pick up our high-performance nutrition program to help you get those anabolic gains. Remember, freaks, you've always got to eat well and you've always got to recover even better. Until next time, cultivate your power. Peace.